Russian leader Vladimir Putin has sought to justify his invasion of Crimea by claiming that anti-Semitic fascist forces have seized power in Ukraine. This claim has been repeated endlessly by Russia's tightly controlled media and, to a lesser extent, has been echoed in international media coverage of the Ukraine crisis. The problem with these anti-Semitic claims is that they do not appear to tally with events on the ground in Ukraine itself. Ukrainian Jewish community leaders have been vocal in their rejection of the Kremlin's allegations and have repeatedly denied that the unrest which led to the overthrow of the Yanukovych regime sparked a rise in anti-Semitism. Instead, they have pointed to the inclusive nature of the new Ukrainian government, which actually includes a number of Jews. Perhaps the most prominent Jewish figure to be appointed by the new Ukrainian administration is Dnipro Petrovsk governor Igor Kolomoisky, who is better known to the Ukrainian public as a billionaire businessman and international Jewish community leader. Kolomoisky, who is a co-owner of JN1 Channel, was one of the first major appointments made by the new Kiev government. He was given responsibility for governing the strategically crucial Ukrainian region of Dnipro Petrovsk, which is both an industrial powerhouse and gateway to the country's Russified East. So far, he appears to be succeeding. The disorder and sporadic pro-Russian rioting which is currently troubling much of East Ukraine has been largely absent from Dnipropetrovsk since Kolomoisky took office, leading many to hold him up as a model for his fellow governors. Kolomoisky has also won considerable patriotic praise throughout Ukraine for personally intervening to provide much-needed fuel supplies to the Ukrainian Armed Forces units stationed in the south of the country. Kolomoisky's high-profile role in Ukraine's new administration has been widely cited as conclusive proof that Russian allegations of a fascist anti-Semitic takeover in the country are false. Critics of the Kremlin narrative point out that it is almost impossible to imagine a prominent member of the Ukrainian Jewish community like Kolomoisky accepting to serve under an anti-Semitic regime, and equally hard to believe that such a regime would have suggested his appointment in the first place.